Good day, my name is William Zvalo, I'm Horticulturist with Pyrenea and today I'll give you an overview of hop production. We'll look at the agronomics of hop production as well as uh, look at the potential for hops in Nova Scotia. Although many of you know me as a vegetable specialist, I have more than 8 years of experience working with hops in Europe and that's why I've added this crop into my portfolio. The hop plant is a distant member of a cannabis and nettles family. Hops are a female flower clusters commonly called seed cones. Hops are used primarily as a flavoring agent in the beer production and that's how many of us know uh, hops for its bitterness. Hops are also used for various other purposes uh, in uh, making other type of beverages as well as in herbal medicine. In the last number of years hops are also being studied for their nutraceutical properties. The world production of hops is estimated to be approximately 100,000 metric tons. Of that, United, uh, of that, Germany produces roughly one third, followed by the United States with about roughly a quarter of the world production, followed by China and the Czech Republic with 7,800 metric tons. Hop is a perennial crop with a permanent rootstock called crown. Crown can produce hops for 20 to 30 years, depending how well the hop yard is taken care of. In the spring, several shoots will grow vertically from each crown. Shoots are technically vines and can grow up to 10, 8 to 10 meters. Vines have stout stem and stiff hair to aid in climbing. Mature hops are hardy plants and can be grown in maritimes. In some areas, colder areas, the hops would have to be mulched, but in the warmer part of the Nova Scotia, such as Annapolis Valley, the hops would not have to be mulched for the winter. Only female plants are cultivated as uh, seedless cones are required for brewing. At maturity, cones are filled with yellow substance called lupulin. And as I said earlier, lupulin is what gives beer its typical bitterness. Hops require fertile, well-drained soil. While establishing hops, frequent irrigation is required. Once the hop yard is established, it has a fairly deep root system and not a lot of irrigation is required. Hops will not tolerate excessive moisture or water pooling. Commercial growers on the west coast of the U.S. where majority of production is happening use drip irrigation. In general, areas where grapes are grown in Nova Scotia, hops would do well. Coastal areas prone to a higher humidity, fog should be completely avoided. Locations with southern exposure and good air circulation are preferred. And heavy clay soils with a high water table should also be completely avoided. Hops are propagated by rhizomes. Rhizomes are underground part of the plant which can be harvested once the crowns are three years and older. In the first season, plant will put en in its energy into growing uh, crown. Once the crown is established, then the year second and beyond, the plant will start produce hop. It will take approximately five years to reach the full potential. Hops are planted in rows spaced 3 to 4 meters apart and plants are spaced 1 to 2 meters in the row. It takes approximately 800 to 1000 rhizomes to plant one acre of the hop yard. And the entire spacing and the configuration of the hop yard will depend on the type of the machinery used and type of a sprayer, harvester, etc. Trellising is essential for hop production. Small producers use low trellis system. And low trellis system is 2.5 to 3 meter high. The picture you can see here is from a research farm of Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada in Charlottetown from this past summer. The hops can grow well on the low trellis but cannot reach their full potential as the vines normally would grow up to 6 to 8 to 10 meters and this trellising system is not high enough for that. Commercial, user, commercial growers around the world use high trellis system, which spaces 5 to 6 meter posts in rows every 15 to 17 meters. High trellis system is much more costly to establish, but will allow the hop plant to develop to its full potential. Hops are susceptible to verticillin wilt, downy mildew, and powdery mildew. In Early part of 19th century, majority of hops in the U.S. were grown on the East Coast. It was downy mildew and powdery mildew, which pushed the production completely westward. And, uh, and it's only the last 10-15 years when the production is 
gradually coming back to the East Coast as the new varieties or better varieties are being developed. Aphids and mites are the most common insect affected hops. Pest and disease management is much more challenging for organic producers. There's a interest in growing hops organically in maritimes, but although possible, it is much more challenging. As hop cone mature, they change color to a paler green and they feel paper when squeezed. Lupulin gland will fill with the aromatic resin. Full maturity in Nova Scotia would be sometimes at the end of August or middle of September. In this past growing season, some hop varieties were mature by the end of August. In other years, like last year, it was the end of September. So it's very much depending on the heat unit accumulation during the growing season. Hot and dry weather generally is good for producing lupulin, whereas the cool and wet weather negatively impacts the, the, the quality of hops. Large producers use specialized equipment for hop harvesting. The specialized equipment could be for large-scale farms and those who would grow 500 and more acres of hops, or even for a small-scale commercial producers, 10 acres of hops and more. In Nova Scotia, the small-scale producers would harvest hops by hands. Once the uh, hops are harvested, they must be either dried immediately or they have to be delivered to the brewery. The shelf life of, hum of fresh hops is almost zero. The humidity of hops is uh, reduced to approximately 10% by drying. After drying, hop must be cooled, packed, and in case of large-scale production, they would be further processed into pellets. Today, modern brewing industry uses predominantly pellets in the beer production. So, what is the economics of commercial hop production? These numbers are for, from mainly based on the US and the European uh, data and would reflect the cost of establishing uh, commercial production for the hops. So, for the trellising system, it would run between $5,000 to $10,000 an acre. Rhizomes could cost from $1 to $10 a piece. Added 800 to 1,000 rhizomes per acre, it would be 1,000 to up to 10,000 acres. There's a lot of interest in the micro brewing, and specific varieties would carry such a premium that the rhizome could, co could cost anywhere from four to six, eight dollars, and for the organic rhizomes, it could be up to ten dollars. At that cost, it's almost cost prohibitive. Yield would vary depending on the location and number of factors, but could be approximately 1,200 to 2,500 pounds per acre. And price for hops will vary, and it's a, it's a commodity traded around the world. So it would be from $4 a pound to $35 a pound during the, the hop craze of 2006. There was a perfect storm. There was a low production, increased uh, beer consumption in Asia, which all led into a spike in the price to up to $35 per pound. So this, these prices do not reflect the prices small producers could deliver to the microbreweries. It's always negotiable and it always depends on the dynamics in the marketplace. Generally, no profit is, uh, is achieved for the first three to five years of hop production. So looking at these numbers, the growing hops is a costly venture and it's also a very risky venture. So what is the outlook for Nova Scotia hops? Uh, at the beginning, I have to stress that Nova Scotia will unlikely become a major hop producing province in Canada or in the world. And that's simply due to its generally cooler and wetter climate. The microbrewing revolution, however, is creating opportunities for local producers to provide the locally grown hops for an emerging uh, of microbreweries. The key to success is not only to understand the agronomics of hop production, but also to understand the expectations of microbreweries for quality, for variety, for supply, and for uh, other parameters of hops. At present, Nova Scotia hops are delivered to microbreweries fresh. There is no drying capacity, to my knowledge, in, in maritimes. 
Fresh hop market with microbreweries generally represents 1% of the entire microbrewing hop market. So at this point, we are supplying this 1% or the, the producers in Nova Scotia are supplying this 1% market for the microbreweries. Further expansion of the hop industry will definitely require investment into infrastructure such as harvester, dryer, possibly pelletizer, in order to tap into a 99% market, which is supplying a dry hops year round for the microbreweries. So what are the Pyrenees activities in hop sector? We are developing a fact sheet of hop production and that will be developed by March 2013. We have been networking with Dr. Aaron Mills of Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada in Charlottetown on hop production. I toured the um, load trellis system in uh, on the research farm and I also uh, toured the high trellis system which just been established this past summer. And we have been consulting with the farmers interested in commercial hop production. We have currently number of inquiries for hop production. Most of it is for small scale production, quarter of an acre, half an acre, but we do have an interest for uh, larger five to 10 acre production in the Annapolis Valley. Well, this brings me to the end of my presentation. I thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to you today. And if you have any questions, concern, or if you want to pass uh, the contact to your client, here is where I can be reached. Thank you.